tying a redfish fly today. This is a fly called the electric chicken. Um, you can pretty much guess where the electric part comes from because it is nice, bright, fluorescent colors. I'm not certain where the chicken part comes from unless the original was tied with a hackle or something instead of, this is an Estaz body. But um, it's called the electric chicken. Uh, maybe it should be the electric bunny or uh, the electric rabbit. I don't know. But it's a very, very simple pattern uh, in terms of a zonker tail, Estaz body. There is um, a different technique that is employed for anchoring the tail so that it doesn't foul. Um, one I have not seen too many people do, um, but I've had great success with, so we will get into that. But again, a very simple pattern that you can tie up in no time and uh, in no time have a bunch of redfish flies uh, for your next outing. So that's the electric chicken and we'll go ahead and get started. So we'll start the electric chicken by placing my hook in the vise. This is a Mustad S71S. Uh, previous numbers on these were a 34007. I'm using this because it has a little bit uh, shorter shank to it. This is a size one, uh, and that is because it has a nice wide gap for our body. I'm gonna start I'm using for thread, I'm using a um, UTC 140 denier in a uh, fluorescent pink. I'm not going to place a weed guard on this. There are lots of different ways that you can do weed guards. I generally do not use them. I find that they get in the way most of the time. So I'm not placing a weed guard on this. That means that I will leave my thread about an eye length behind the eye of the hook and then I'm going to attach my bead chain eyes. If you want, you can use regular uh, dumbbell eyes like a silver or even a, a colored, a painted um, red or uh, say white and black pupil uh, lead dumbbell eyes if you want, if you need the weight. I generally do not and I'm looking for something that is going to stay in the middle of the water column a lot easier so I'm just going to use some bead chain. If you want a bigger profile, you could go with like an extra large bead chain. That would be fine. Once those are tied in, I'm going to advance my thread down to the end of the shank. Our electric chicken is a really, really simple fly in that there's two components to it. There's a tail that is made out of a rabbit zonker. I'm using a, a barred chartreuse magnum zonker. Magnum meaning that the um, strip of hide here is actually cut to a quarter of an inch width instead of one eighth which is the normal zonker um, and it has a body of Estaz this is a Estaz Grande in a hot pink and that's what the Estaz looks like same body material we used on or I used on the Estaz shrimp that I tied before um, but it's really really basic and simple there is one little catch though when you tie in your zonker strips um, like this, what ends up happening a lot of times, if I were to just tie this in right here and anchor it down right at the end of the shank like that, I have a hinge point right here on this tail. If I were to just leave that and it were flopping around out in the water and when I'm casting it and everything, there's a hinge point right here. Because it is forward of the bend of the hook, what that means is that there are times where in casting this, the, the rabbit will actually get caught up into the gap of the hook like this and it'll foul up, basically. So we want to prevent that from happening. There's a couple of different ways that uh, people do this. The most common way that they do this is by putting a loop of monofilament you can use, say, a 30-pound monofilament or something a little heavier, and they'll put a little loop of monofilament right back here. However, I don't like that way um, simply because it doesn't change the hinge point. If you look at it this way, if I'm tying this and anchoring it down here at the end of the shank, my hinge point is still in front of the bend of the hook, so it's going to foul up. Even if I were to thread 
the hot, the uh, zonker strip through here in casting it sooner or later it's going to come back out the other way and th therefore it can still foul up. There's a different method that I like to use that I will show you today and it, it does uh, entail some monofilament but I've had much better success with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my zonker the full length and I'm going to trim some of the fur off of maybe a quarter of an inch right here and then I'm going to narrow it down. I'm just going to cut down the sides a little bit. That's simply so that it doesn't bulk up the hook shank so much. I'm going to tie that in so my last few wraps will be around the entirety of that hide and not right here uh, where it's, it's thin and narrow. And then I'll start lashing that down to the hook shank. Hide's pretty tough. Um, I, I've rarely ever had a situation where a fish grabbed the tail and actually broke the hide. But I want to anchor this down and I'm going to put a number of thread wraps on that back and forth to make certain that it's anchored and stays in position. The reason I'm tying this in upside down is because of the dumbbell eyes as well as if you were to use, I should say I have bead chain eyes on this, but if you were to use dumbbell eyes, it's going to change the center of gravity on the hook and it's going to flip it over. So in the water, this will actually swim like this and all of that uh, fur will be pointing towards the top. So what we need to do is we need to anchor our, um, our hinge point here. We have to change the hinge point from right here and the anchor point to something further out so that when it flops around it's past the bend of the hook. To do that I'm going to use some monofilament. Now I've seen some people will tie this in and then they'll actually use some Zappa Gaps uh, CA super glue and glue this down a little bit further. I, I've tried that before and I have issues with eventually that tears off and then you've got the mono sticking out here and you're still back to the same problem. What I found works best for me is if I thread the monofilament through the hide. You could certainly do this prior to tying in the zonker strip if you want, but for me the easiest way is to take my bodkin, I'm going to double the hide over right back here at the end of the hook like this, and right at the base I'm going to run my bodkin right through that hide and here I'll feel it coming through the other side not into my finger and when I feel that coming through then I'll brace both sides so that I run the bodkin all the way through the skin like this and bunch it up. I'm going to leave the bodkin kind of sitting in there for a little bit. What that will do is the um, the diameter of the needle is going to push out and they hide just a little bit and it's going to keep it open enough long enough for me to thread some monofilament in through there. And this is probably the most difficult uh, step in this doing this procedure uh, because we got to get the monofilament through both of those holes at the same time. To aid in that I did cut the monofilament if you can see that at a bit of an angle and I have that ready to, um, in my hand, ready to put that through. I'm going to push the zonker strip right here tight up against the hook to keep that fold in it, and that will keep the holes aligned. So I'm going to anchor that, and then I'm going to pull this out, and I'm going to slip the mono into the hole, and because I braced it together like this, they stayed in line and the mono goes right through. At least this is, you know, I found this to be the easiest method um, for me of doing this. So once that monofilament is through, I'm just going to extend it up into the body and then I'm going to lash that monofilament down. I'll cover all that up with some thread wraps here. We're going to have a big bushy body on this, so I'm really not concerned about the underparts. Um, you could actually even add some um, 
lead wraps in here if you wanted to keep the profile of the bead chain eyes but needed a little bit of weight. So with my thread all the way at the back of the shank, I'm now going to trim the, the um, mono. Now I don't want to trim the mono right up next to the hole and the reason is this, this hide will stretch. If you can see that on the camera there, it actually has some stretch to it. And if I cut this right here and I get a fish that short strikes it and stretches, it can pull the mono back in through this side. Now I still have something in there that is, is going to help prevent it from fouling, but it could still, if that goes back into that hole back on this side, then um, it can foul up again. So I'm going to cut this maybe about an eighth to a quarter of an inch past, just like that. I have not found that this gets in the way of the action of the fly. Um, it, it will still flutter and move, but you'll notice that our anchor point now for that hide is stuck all the way out here, and it is less likely to foul. It still can, um, always it still can, no matter what you do, uh, foul up, but it's much less likely to foul up there. So with that done, we're going to add some head cement all along that to um, soak into those threads real good and anchor that down and then we're going to tie in our Estes and wrap the body of our electric chicken. So we're just about ready to put the body in of our electric chicken. Uh, one thing we do have to do, uh, as I noted earlier, I tied in this uh, strip uh, the full length. I do have to shorten that up. I want the hide to be basically about the shank length or um, a hook length long if you want a little bit longer tail. You can't take your scissors and just come in here and chop like this because we'll chop all that hair off um, at an abrupt angle. We don't want that. We want all this hair uh, and the nice tips out back. So you can use the edge of your scissors if you want um, just by opening your scissors and use the edge of your scissors like this to cut the tail or you can just take a straight razor, um, a single edge razor and go ahead and cut those, cut the hide. So when I cut the hide here, notice I just cut through the skin and I'm not cutting any of these uh, hair fibers off so I still have my nice tapered uh, tail. All right, so tail's done. We are ready for the body. This, as I mentioned before, is a Grande Estes in a hot pink that we're gonna use for the body. Like the Estes shrimp that I tied a while back, I'm going to just anchor the tip of that Estes right along the hook shank and then anchor that down well and wrap my thread right up to behind the eye of the hook. We're going to wrap this around. I do want to, as I'm doing this, stroke the fibers backwards so that none of them get trapped going forward. I want them all to stick out. You don't have to have real, real tight edge-to-edge -edge wraps on this. Um, I am pulling on the Aztaz just a little bit. That's just to make certain that it's pulled nice and taut around the hook shank. And I wouldn't worry too much if it is, um, looks like it's getting matted down a little. We're going to fluff that out. Just want to make certain that as you're coming around, you're stroking those back so we're not trapping any fibers.
few wraps here I'm gonna pull tight on that and squeeze in a couple of wraps right tight against that bead chain eye. I'll anchor that in right behind the bead chain. Trim away the excess. Bring my thread up front for the bead chain eyes behind the eye of the hook and just make a little bit of a nose to the fly. Makes it look a little more finished and it gives it a, a little bright front end. I'm going to put in a five or six turn whip finish. Seven. And cut away my thread. Before I put any head cement on that, I'm going to take my bodkin here and kind of, and you can use the scissors if you want, and just rake this back forward just a little bit. And that's just to get some of those fibers sticking out a little more perpendicular. Similar to the Estaz shrimp, I like to trim the bottoms of these just a little bit, just so that they have a little bit more um, of a profile of something flat on the underside, that's all. That's just me. You could leave that just the way it was and that will be just fine. With all of that trimmed, I'm going to take my fly tight and I'm going to soak all those thread wraps right at the base of the Estaz across the dumbbell eyes, I'm sorry, the bead chain eyes and up front. Um, and that's just to reinforce that, just to help it a little bit. And there you have it. That is the electric chicken. Very bright attractor pattern. Good redfish fly. Um, you could tie this up in other colors um, if you want to, as long as you're keeping it kind of bright and fluorescent. Um, I think that goes with the electric part of the fly. And again, as I have mentioned on some of the other redfish flies that I've tied, you can use a dumbbell eye to add more weight on that or a little bit of lead wraps along the hook shank just to add a little bit of weight. But at least my experience has been that most of the redfish um, that I have fished for, you want the fly in the water column, not just dragging on, on the bottom. But I'm certain there are places uh, where people fish for redfish where that's what they want. They, similar to bonefish or permit, they want a little crab or a shrimp that's just sitting on uh, the bottom inching along. So there you have it. Simple pattern, easy to tie. You can whip out a bunch of these in no time. That is the electric chicken. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and not only learned a new pattern, but maybe learned some new techniques and a few new skills. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button below. You can support Dressed Irons by hitting the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you get notified when new videos are published. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section and I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Until next time, remember, it's fly time. If you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Well.